Rumo for that beautiful prayer, for that beautiful prayer, especially praying for our father and, and Tate Ratzara. Ah, it's my singular pleasure this morning, Pastor Ratzara, to welcome you personally into this platform. Yes, we have been excited about the series that you are holding about where is the fire? And this morning, I know God has given you so much that you are going to share with us. This is your time, my pastor, and I'm asking for a special blessing upon you. Thank you very much, uh, Mazodwa. So happy to see you again and uh, to see all of you uh, through this uh, technology. So glad that I'm part of this program and I can see that the Lord is blessing all of you. And today, as you mentioned, is a special day and that is a special day of uh, prayer and fasting. Uh, we continue with we continue with our program. Where is the fire? Where is the fire? That is the question that we have been asking. And we started already to answer just a little bit of a recap. We know that we are talking now about, about the life, the life of this, uh, of this man who was so weak and then he became so strong. And we would like to have that experience too because we would like to uh, step up, not to step down into the valley of uh, being far from God. Today, we are going to talk about the second step up. That means back to Gethsemane. Yesterday, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we talked about, about the love of God. You, you see, if you really would like to step up, would like to, um, to be far from that valley of desperation, of being far from God, the first thing is to feel the presence of God, his love for every one of us. You know, love is powerful. It is even more powerful than death. And if we have that love in our hearts, the love of Jesus Christ, then you remember, the stories that we, um, we told yesterday, especially the story of Joseph. He did not want to work. He did not want to serve. But because of the love of the, the old man, he decided to love him, decided to serve him, and he was blessed. We too, we need to have that experience, the love of Jesus in our hearts. And that will change our lives. That changed the life of Peter. And that was the kind of a foundation, foundation of the strength of the spiritual power that Peter had. Let's then follow now the footsteps of this man and to learn from his example. So today we are going to continue and then in Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26 and verse 75, you remember when the, the eyes of Jesus met, or rather the eyes of Peter met the eyes of Jesus Christ. That look changed him. And after that look, he went out and wept bitterly. Matthew chapter 26, verse 75. He went out and wept bitterly. What is this? He went out. You see, um, Sister White talks more about this and gives us more insights. In the book, The Desire of Ages, this is a powerful book, and I would like us to to read this book. I encourage every one of us just to, to read and spend time studying this book. And then it is said here, he pressed, he pressed on in solitude and darkness. He knew not and cared not whither. At last, he found himself in Gethsemane, the scene of the few of few hours before came vividly 
to his mind. So he left. And where did he go? He went back to Gethsemane. And he was reflecting on what has happened. And then I continue reading. It was torture to his bleeding heart to know that he had added the heaviest burden to the Savior's humiliation and grief. On the very spot where Jesus had poured out his soul in agony to his father, Peter fell upon his face and he wished that he might die. He was so broken. He was so sad of what has just, he has done. He felt so bad about that, that himself through his denial that added the suffering of Jesus Christ. And he went to get some money. And he looked, he searched the very spot where Jesus Christ prayed. You remember, he was asked to watch and pray, but he didn't. And that was his downfall. But this time, he said, I must watch now. I must pray now. I must wrestle now. And I must humble myself. So, what did he do? He confessed his sins. He repented. That is the next step. When we feel the love of God, we feel bad that we have disappointed him. We have displeased him. And then we confess, we repent. We know that we have done wrong. We have somehow displeased him and we confess our sins. And when you confess our sins, we should never cover up. We should just open up to God. God knows anyway. There's no need to hide. We just need to come to Jesus. And when you come to him, just confess our sins. And this promise we know this very well, but it is so sweet. If we confess our sins, is faithful and just. Forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, that means we need to confess our sins. This if, we must do it. We should never leave, leave, it, leave it as wish or if, but we must confess our sins. And when you do that, it's faithful and just to forgive our sins. And not only to forgive us, but to cleanse us as well. Amen. You see, God loves us. He's not just there to declare us just or righteous through the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, but he cleanses us also. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And when he, when he does that, when you do that, what happened? You see, in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 29, there is a verse there. Many times you don't read this, but this verse says, for our God is a consuming fire. You know, we read that God is love, but we don't speak much about God as a consuming fire, but God is a consuming fire. And this is very, very significant for us because the prophet Isaiah had declared that the Lord would cleanse his people from the iniquities by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning the word of the Lord to Israel was I will turn my hand upon thee and purely pur purge away thy dross and take away all thy sin listen to this my dear brothers and my dear sisters God is a consuming fire and this consuming fire, God, 
God is burning our sins. So when we confess our sins, then God will burn our sins. You know, fire is so powerful. Have you burned something? When you burn something, it is burned and it vanishes, becomes ashes, and all of a sudden, that thing that existed then turned into ashes and turned to almost nothing. This is what God, God is doing, and God wants to do that. We need to confess our sins. And when we confess our sins, he is a consuming fire. And through that, the sin wherever found, our God is a consuming fire. In the book, Desire of Ages, page 107 and 108, I read this, to sin wherever found, our God is a consuming fire. In all we submit to his power, the spirit of God will consume sin. But listen to this now. But if men cling to sin, they become identified with it, then the glory of God which destroys sins must destroy them. That is a very dangerous thing. We should never cling to sin. We should rather confess because this God with a consuming fire, if we cling to sin, then it will, it will be consumed. Our sin will be consumed, but if we identify with our sin, then we will be consumed with our sins as well. So now is the time. Now is the time for us to confess our sins. And it is said this, when the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the blood of Jerusalem from their midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. So the burning here is the burning of our sins, burning of our guilt, burning of all these things that are really burdening us. And you know, God God is so good. And when we do that, in Micah chapter 7, verse 18 and 19, I read this. When you confess our sins, this is the promise. Who is a God like you? Pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Micah chapter 7. That is the good news. My brothers and my sisters, this is the good news. All of us here, we are sinners. We are sinful and we are sinners. But you know what? It has been said that both heaven and hell, they are, they, they will be populated by, by sinners. But the difference is, what is the difference? The difference is that heaven will be populated by forgiven sinners. But hell will be populated by unforgiven sinners. That is the difference. Now is the time for us to confess our sins. For our sins to be burned. Not us, but our sins. Let me tell you a story that happened in Russia. There was a, in a camp, a military camp, there was this general. And this general, he was the commander of the army in that camp. And uh, in that same camp, um, his son was the treasurer of the camp. And this treasurer of the camp is young, young officer. Uh, he was good, but he has, a, he has a problem. He didn't know how to manage money. He liked 
to spend, to spend and spend and spend. So being a treasurer, he said, well, he finished first his salary and then uh, he still needed more money. And then he took some of the money of the army and he signed, he signed, okay, I'm going to repay this. I'm going to repay this when I have money, then I will repay. So he, he kept on taking money, taking money, taking money. And uh, this went on and on and on. And finally, one day, uh, one day, what he did is that he counted his debt. He wanted to know how much he was to the army. And he realized that there is no way that he can repay this debt. And he was so discouraged. He was thinking, he was thinking of his father, who is the leader of the army, the disgrace. And for himself, if he's found out, so he couldn't, he couldn't do, he couldn't face this. And then, then he decided to kill himself. He decided to kill himself. So uh, in his tent, in his tent, he, he took his, um, um, he took his pistol, his, um, <clears throat> his gun, and he sat there at the desk and he pointed, he pointed the gun to his head. But he did something. He took the book, the book that was uh, hundreds of year, years ago. So it's not like the electronic accounting right now. So you counted the money, you counted and you counted rather the debt and he totalized that and it was so big. And then uh, he put, he put, he wrote underneath the amount and he said, my debt is too big. I cannot pay it. And he signed. And he signed. And then he decided to kill himself. So he was there. It was the night. And he pointed already the, the gun to his head. But he decided, you know, uh, before I kill myself, I have to reflect on my childhood and my youth, it was so nice. My upbringing was good. So he was thinking of the good things that uh, he spent, the time he spent with his mother, his father. And then he fell asleep. He fell asleep. And during that time, Nicola I, the emperor, the king, he used to uh, visit military camps and uh, he kind of, uh, he came there not as with the, the robes or the attire of the king, but with a simple, simple military officer. So he went around and to see what is going on, he did not want anyone to know. And then he saw this camp and he realized that something strange is happening right here. And he saw the gun pointing to the head of this young officer. And he saw the book opened and he read, my debt is too big, I cannot pay. And then he understood everything. And then he took his royal pen and he wrote something underneath the signature of the young man. I will pay it. He signed Nicola the first. And he left. And after he left, the young man woke up and he was ready to uh, pull the trigger. But he glanced, he looked at the amount and he saw Nicola the first, I pay your debt. And he said, what is this? Oh, some people must, must be playing a very bad game here, trying to imitate the, the signature of the king. And he analyzed it. He took some of the official documents and 
He compared, and sure enough, it was the same as the original. Then he realized that the king indeed passed through that place. And the king has forgiven him and even pay will pay his debt. And then he cried like a little child. He was moved by that forgiving spirit of the king. And he vowed that never again he will do such a thing. He was a changed man. My dear friends, do you have the burden today of the sin? And you feel that it is too big? You don't need to carry that. Just come to Jesus. And he, he has already paid the debt. And you are free. I am free. That is the key to become strong like Peter. May the Lord be with us as we come to him and confess our sins and believe that he has forgiven us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, right now, we come humbly before you. We know that we are sinners and sinful, but we know as well that you died for us so that our sins must be forgiven as long as you confess confess them so here we are we confess our sins please forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness remove the burden and give us the peace in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And 